Hi, my name is Jim Davis, a uh, member of EAA Chapter 1246 in McKinney, Texas. I'm here to talk about my BD4 restoration project. In December of 2013, I had decided that I wanted a BD4. I'd become interested in BD4 back in 1969 when I saw it first shown on the Popular Mechanics front cover in that article. It got me excited about that. When I <clears throat> decided to get the airplane, then I started shopping around and I found one in Houston. Uh, this particular airplane, I'm the seventh owner and uh, I bought it as a firewall forward project. Uh, today we'll talk about how I went from a firewall forward project to a full restoration and what I have learned along the way. In December I had a trailer built so that I would be able to haul back whichever BD-4 that I wound up buying. Turns out that the airplane I bought was in Houston, Texas. Uh, so in January 9th I actually went to Houston and picked up this airplane uh, which is serial number 238 and uh, tail number is 238 Bravo Delta for BD. Uh, brought it back and was in a T hangar here in McKinney for the first year and then in January of this year moved over to this facility. By February I had purchased an engine and it had a prop strike and I thought that it would be okay but the more that I thought about it and talked to other members of the EA chapter, realized that I really needed to tear the engine down. And it's a good thing I did because I did find parts that needed to be replaced. Unfortunately, the crank came out fine, but uh, the crank gear, idler gears, and the oil pump and camshaft all had to be replaced. Overhauling the engine was a pretty big task, but uh, I took it on and <clears throat> followed all the books and also received plenty of guidance from other chapter members. Uh, it was a good thing I did because, uh, like I say, I, I definitely found things that needed to be done. I was glad I did it. Once that was done, then I proceeded to go after the airframe, and that's the next segment. Once the engine was complete, it was time to take the airframe off of the trailer. I did that uh, in July of 2014 and decided that I needed to do a few things to the airframe before I put the engine on it and propeller and instruments and took my firewall forward project and started to fly. Those included the at that time what I thought would be just the windscreen and uh, other plexiglass that had crazing and a couple of simple modifications that I wanted to do. Once I had the airplane back on the ground and I pulled the windscreen out, there was also a plexiglass panel in the roof in front of the main spar that also had crazing. So when I pulled that out, I decided that I didn't know if I really wanted to keep that opening there, so I took the top skin off of the cabin. I found corrosion. It wasn't deep, but it was there and it needed to be treated. And then I decided that because of that, I, there were some other modifications that I wanted to do, like replacing a panel here with access to the instruments and hydraulics. And again, when I pulled those panels off, I found more corrosion. That led me then to further steps, finding uh, as I removed more skin, more minor corrosion, and I just had to keep on going. And I wound up getting all the way back to the tail, pulling skin off, and then it became a project of disassemble piece by piece of the airplane, uh, treating corrosion, putting it back together, and making the modifications that I feel are necessary to make it a good airplane. After I removed the skin off the airplane, in order to get the belly skin off, that particular part, I had to remove the tail wheel. That led me to find one of my first issues with this airplane that uh, uh, required some serious work. The tail wheel attachment, uh, there was a lot of damage back there that uh, had not been noticeable. 
Uh, ultimately, I wound up building a new tailwheel spring and machining the bracket for the tailwheel uh, and adding strength where it needed to be. Uh, then I proceeded from there uh, to the main landing gear and again uh, found that I had to uh, rebuild some parts and order some new other parts for the attachments uh, to correct uh, some problems that I had with the landing gear. I've also, I, once the skin was off, I found damage that uh, where the airplane had uh, gone off the runway and sheared the right main landing gear. And this was, uh, had been repaired, but it was uh, not a pretty repair. So I've replaced several angles of aluminum uh, along the way to uh, fix all of that. When I got up to the front of the airframe, I didn't like the looks of the firewall. Uh, this airplane had had many things added on and then removed over time. So there were many, many plugs all over the place and holes that just didn't make sense. So I thought, why not, since I have everything else stripped off, pull the firewall off too. Uh, and I did, uh, I still have to cut the stainless steel for the new firewall, but that's gonna happen fairly soon. At this time, I have about 850 hours tied up in the airframe restoration. I'm working on about 30 hours per week. Uh, things yet to come, obviously finishing up the skin and then painting it. I'm painting it like the landing gear you see here. This is a yellow flash latex enamel from Home Depot. Uh, there is a webinar on the EAA that I saw about doing this and I'm gonna do it for the whole airplane. I hope to fly this thing later this year, but it probably won't be before Oshkosh.